happy. I'm very happy talking with you, showing the view you love. <laughs> I can't believe I'm actually in your t-shirt. I'm very happy about it. Sent you lots of kisses. Love you lots. Mwah! A lot of you guys have been uh, sending me comments and things like that, asking, oh, tell us some more cop stories and things like that. And, of course, the uh, the whole new thing with Nick and Mac, uh, contrary to, to their beliefs, uh, I was not fired. <laughs> We've already established that. But um, basically, I figured, uh, why the fuck not, man? I, I Listen, if, if people ask me, hey, can you talk about something... Uh, that's why I have an AMA show every Friday on Instagram Live. I, I, I don't give a fuck. Full transparency you get with me. Um, uh, I guess what I'll say is the, uh, to become a cop uh, eight days after your 20th birthday, because at the time in 1987, you only needed to be 20 to get in, and you did not need anything more than a high school GED. I had a high school regular diploma. I had six months of uh, college. I think I had 12 credits, but you didn't need any college. So I was able to get into the police academy on, uh, like I said, a week and change after I turned 20. So I was basically a fucking teenager and a week when I was sworn in and uh, started to do six months at the academy. And back then it was on the 23rd Street in Manhattan, not in Queens where it is now. It really wasn't that hard. I mean, I was in fucking great shape. Uh, so the gym portion of it was fucking easy for me. Uh, I, I was a pretty pretty sharp kid, you know, in, in school. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't glaring by any chances. But 
you know, it, it was basic stuff. If you had common sense and street sense, you got most of this stuff. The law stuff, you had to kind of remember some more terminology and things like that. But I did fine. The police academy was uh, was basically just six months just to, to get you ready. But they really didn't get us ready for a hell of a lot. And uh, a lot of it has to do with, uh, with the quota uh, sergeants and things of the like. Uh, so basically what I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll leave the names out to protect the innocent. Um, we had uh, a police science was one of the courses that we had to take. And police science was basically uh, to learn what is the administrative part of being a cop. There's a lot of paperwork involved, especially back then. It was all handwritten. Uh, you had to write fucking the same thing ad nauseum and on 10 different pieces of paper 10 different forms here's a here's a you know a 61 and here's an arrest online olbs and here's this and this holy fuck you know i mean it was just tons summonses complaint reports aided cards arrest paper an arrest packet was this fucking thick so basically what they're supposed to do in police science is teach you how to do all of these things well needless to say when i finally graduated and was given my first assignment in lovely bedford stuyvesant brooklyn back in the 80s it was a, a, a shithole now it was a fucking ultra shithole then and being a brooklyn kid it wasn't a bad ride for me, so I actually, you know, commute was pretty good, uh, you know, except I had, I had to worry about possibly getting shot at, <laughs> not only whilst working, well, back and forth, fucking portal to portal, as they call it in the police jargon, but I got uh, into the street, and the uh, my police science teacher was a, a gentleman, an African-American gentleman, who... Uh, was a sergeant who was a quota sergeant. Basically, they have to make a certain amount of uh, different diversity to, to make the list a little different. And especially back then, it was like a three-part exam. It was more than 100 questions. So it was way differently. They called it the Z-curve. Um, I'm not going to get into all the specifics because it's very confusing, and I'm not even sure how to fucking explain. But just basically, the Z-curve... Basically, uh, to make sure that uh, not just all white males are bosses, if you will. So this guy uh, taught us for six months, and I left the police academy not knowing how to write a summons, an aided card, a complaint report, or an arrest report. I had no fucking idea what I was doing. So one week out of the uh, out of the police academy, I had my first arrest, and. I had not a fucking clue of what to do. And when you're a rookie cop, and uh, at the time it was called FTU, it was basically NSU, you know, because uh, it was NSU like I think a year before that. So we still kind of called it NSU. And basically you're assigned to one precinct where you turn out of, but you cover like four of them. And I turned out of the 7-9 in bed and we covered the 7 9 7, 7 8, 8, and 8 4. And sometimes the 8, 3, and the 9, 0, depending on the situation. Um, uh, most of the time in the 7, 7. That was the main precinct because of the big scandal that happened there a year before that. So my first arrest, Mr. Robert Johnson, it was six days out of the police academy on a 4 to 12 shift. And I arrested him. And not only did I have no idea what I was going to do, but no one was uh, being nice to help me. Um, he tried to hang himself in the cell. <laughs> It was a fucking shit show. Um, so uh, it was a, a very, and there was a quota sergeant on the desk that uh, made a snide remark when uh, my brand new three uh, cell mag light, big fucking expensive flashlight that had my name and shield number scratched into it, was stolen by uh, some other salty fucking, probably three year fucking wonder at the 8A precinct. And I said, Sarge, and I remember this specifically now. Sarge, did you happen to see a, a, a three-cell mag floating around? And he looked up from behind his paper, and he goes, somebody probably housed it. This is a New York City police sergeant talking to a rookie right now. And went back to his, uh, I don't know, whatever he was reading in the paper at the time. Pretending to read, most likely. Um so that was my my initiation and then this cop came on duty i think it was on the midnight now and it was this 
black guy who had time on and he goes first the rest and I go dude I am fucking lost this guy was the fucking sweetest guy in the world sat down with me broke down all the paper with me showed me exactly how to fill it out help me with the prints and all of that stuff because that's a fucking whole thing in itself so uh, I don't recall this dude's name but I fucking said to him that night I said dude I owe you fucking many a beer and he says no you know this is what we do for each other and I and I told him about the the Magalite I'm like I don't need, I don't know what happened I didn't he goes people are fucking dicks you know you deal with good one good and bad I said well I'm, I'm glad I dealt with you now so yeah first arrest six months out of the academy not a clue of what to do paperwork wise and those are things that you need to be able to do with your eyes closed when you're a cop especially if you're a fucking active cop working in a busy house which i pretty much always was so i'm going to do some of these stories as i go along but this is basically uh police academy and first arrest but i have a funny one which was uh it actually occurred before that arrest which was my first day in, on patrol on the street uh, uh in the pouring rain during a uh, day of outrage demonstration, the 80s in New York City was a lot of day of outrages. Uh, Al Sharpton and the Sharptonettes was my pet name for them. And uh, they used to demonstrate at all times and they shut down the Brooklyn Bridge and they walked over it and we had to walk alongside of them. And oh boy, <laughs> I was called some interesting names. And I, I I didn't care. I got a kick out of it. I was a fucking kid. I didn't know any fucking better. And uh, I just kind of, I still laugh about it to this day fucking 32 three years later but just needless to say when you're in the police academy and you don't learn anything in six months and probably the most important class there is to learn <laughs> you got a fucking on the job fucking training man and sometimes that's the best thing you know it wasn't for me but i think i learned a little something better by having to learn the hard way shut up and sit down Time for a little light workout outside. You know what? Get work done at home. Have a great one.
How you doing? My name is John Sikoris, and this is Sharice Sikoris, and we're the owners of Titan Medical Center. My name is Cheryl Spangler, IFBB Pro Bikini, and D4 Athlete, and you are watching Muscle Sport TV.